Good evening and welcome to episode 56 of Black and Azul. As the San Jose Earthquakes take on the Portland Timbers, they met them in midweek. They play them again here on the weekend, a 1-1 draw on Wednesday. We'll show you the starting 11 here for Matias Almeida's side this evening. Vega back in the goalkeeper position. Nick Lima at the right back position. Florian Youngworth, and there's a spot for Tanner Beeson in the back line with Marco Lopez keeping his position. Judson in the defensive midfield role. A start for Calvillo and Jackson Yule in the two eight positions. Salinas on the left side. Carlos Fierro has a chance on the right side this evening. And through the middle is Andy Rios. Some injuries tonight for the San Jose Earthquakes. Would love to hear the thoughts on the team news from Alex Morgan. Thanks, Charles. I think the biggest story tonight is obviously San Jose's injury list and how quickly it's growing. This is their seventh game in 21 days, so it makes sense that these injuries are accumulating. Uh, Danny Husen and Guram Tashia have both been out for extended periods, and they were joined by not one, but two more center backs after Wednesday night's game. Jacob Akanya Ridge and Oswaldo Alanis are both sidelined tonight with a thigh and a knee injury, respectively. And that puts Almeida in a difficult position. Uh, it's funny because we talked about how deep this roster was before the MLS's back tournament, how they had so many options. But then they sold their number 10. They have three center back sideline with injury, and they didn't bring in any new additions over the summer. So now this roster looks pretty threadbare. Jamin Moore, Tanner Beeson with Florian Youngworth tonight in the back line. What do we make of that pairing? I mean, they're the only two left, to be quite honest. So it, uh, Matias Almeida's hand was a bit forced tonight. That said, they have played two games together, so they've developed some experience. We know that they practice together and have for most of the season. So again, they've got that rapport with each other. Uh, Daniel Vega obviously now behind them this game, probably something Matias Almeida felt was necessary uh, to be able to support them and feel more comfortable. Um, and I think for Beeson, it's an opportunity to redeem himself from his last start which was a 5-1 loss to LAFC, where arguably he was at fault for two or three of the goals. He's going to be bolstered by having, I think, the strongest outside back combination defensively that the Quakes have in Marcos Lopez on the left side and the return of Nick Lima to the right side after his stellar performance against the LA Galaxy. Yeah, Nick Lima in that back line. A lot of fans wanted Nick Lima at that right back position tonight. Also a start for Carlos Fierro on the right side. Andy Rios in the middle. Rios, we're still waiting for the best of Andy Rios. We had a spirited debate on uh, Wednesday night uh, between Andy Rios and Wando and uh, Daryl DK and who we would want as a, as a backup striker to Chris Wandalowski. But Carlos Fierro, he seems to be the player that that uh, that Matias Almeida likes. He'd like to get the best out of him tonight. Shea Salinas on the left. Alex, what do you make of the attack tonight? I think this is a big night for Carlos Fierro on that right side. Both him and Andy Rios were brought in around this time last year. Uh, and they've had diverging fortunes. Andy Rios has carved a place in this offense, but Carlos Fierro hasn't. Uh, I think this is Carlos Fierro's opportunity, maybe one of his last opportunities this year to show what he's capable of. Uh, he hasn't. He didn't perform well at the MLS's back tournament. Uh, he hasn't been able to find a position in this lineup. And look, the Quakes have lots of other options on the wing. They have uh, Cade Cowell, who's been playing well on that right side, can also play on the left. Uh, Christian Espinosa obviously has that spot. Uh, but he's out tonight, I assume, as a result of rugby rotation. So if Carlos Fierro isn't playing well tonight, he could well get uh, get the hook early on, and we could see Kate Cowell and Christian Espinosa filling in that spot. Before we get to the Portland news, and I'm going to come back to you, Alex, Jamin Moore on this attacking three tonight. Shea Salinas, Carlos Fierro, Andy Rios, and then potentially uh, Jackson Yule, just patrolling maybe in that 10 position, maybe Eric Calvillo. Where do we see this going? Who's going to slot in? Is it going to be two dueling eights box to box? And uh, where do you think Shea Salinas uh, has, a, has a point to play in this team? Is He's always one of those players that puts the team on his back. Yeah, against the LA Galaxy, we saw Almeida use the double eights, and, and that might be the approach tonight to help Calvillo out, so he has to cover a little bit less ground. He brings a lot of energy. Uh, I think it. I think it is a good time to give him a start, uh, a home game, and he's done well in his substitute appearances. And now Eric Cavio gets the chance 
I believe uh, he's going to amazingly stay to the right side, but we'll see kind of how Almeida sets that up. If, uh, if Jackson's going to be more of a double eight or if he's going to really kind of play a double pivot, that'll go forward a bit more. Um, I agree uh, with the comment about uh, Fierro. This has to be a game that he's a part of and him and Andy Rios need to show why they were brought to San Jose. It hasn't happened really so far other than uh, a little bit of, of what we saw at MLS is back. This is an opportunity for the two of them to prove their worth and to put a couple goals in the net together. On the Portland side, uh, on the Portland team news and, and team notes, Diego Valeri back in their side, Abobasi back in their side, Viafania back in their side, Diego Chara back in their side. We didn't see uh, the strongest 11 from Portland on Wednesday. Seeing a different Portland tonight, very much a, a stronger 11, certainly on paper, Alex. Absolutely, Charles. On Wednesday night, I was really surprised, actually, by how tepid the Timbers were. They didn't offer much going forward. And that's because they were basically playing a B-string lineup. It felt like Giovanni Savarese was saving his team strength for tonight. But now Obobese is back. Valeri's back. Chara is back. And they're leading the team with four goals uh, apiece this year, Obobese and Valeri. They are the players that led the Portland Timbers to victory in the MLS's back tournament this summer. And they're going to give the Quakes a lot of problems tonight. They're going to test this back line. And I'm looking at Liam Fishman's comments on the live stream. He says that he doubts that this will be another draw another low scoring draw and i agree i think we could see many more goals tonight uh, given how much uh, offensive firepower portland are playing with yeah the way that you saw the game kind of on wednesday night and not, not the uh, brightest affair uh, even though san jose kind of passed portland off the pitch but didn't have much to show for it other than the one goal that vaco scored about 13 minutes from time let's talk a little bit about unlocking the portland timbers uh you know a certainly different personnel for them tonight uh, jamin Moore, coming back to you uh, what do the, the quakes need to do are they in search potentially of a hidden gem uh, if you will, for maybe a Calvillo or a Yule or, or a Salinas potentially that can provide that last pass. It's always that last pass. Um, where do you potentially see this going? Uh, is there a, a hidden gem 10 maybe this evening? I'm interested to see how progressive uh, Eric Calvillo will play in a game where he gets a start. Uh, this is, I believe this is his first MLS regular season start. So we really don't quite know other than what we've seen from him in Reno. Um, I do want to see that progressive passing. I want to see balls getting in behind the defense. Now, you don't have Christian Espinosa on the right. Fierro is not quite as fast as him, but good opportunity for Fierro to show he can get in behind the defense and what he can do. Shea Salinas does have that ability on the left. We already know that. Those guys need to be getting to the end line. They need to be looking for the cutbacks. We should see a bit of overlapping, uh, maybe even underlapping runs from Lopez and from Lima, it's gonna be really important to actually get Andy Rios good service. Rios has taken a lot of criticism, but to be fair, since MLS is back, he's not getting a lot of service either. And so that service needs to be on point tonight. Yule and Cabillo providing the, the through balls in behind, the wingers getting in behind the defense, Andy Rios being where he needs to, to be in order to clean those up. That's the way that the Quakes get back on track and get three points tonight. Nice performance off of the bench from uh, the youngster, Cade Cowell. We saw some really uh, good work from him against the Galaxy for that first goal uh, that he had. And, and he's had uh, some opportunities, and he's shown well. Jesus Rojas, Cade Cowell up front as a nine would be uh, great to see. Ren Tain 18 says clone him. He also says, we want Cade. Uh, STP1 core. Cade, first one off the bench, right? Oh, and... Uh, Thanks, Black and Azul, watching on my evening walk. I hope you're enjoying your evening uh, walk, STP1 core. And then back up to our buddy Matt Wyke, watching from the car in his stadium. I'll give you a wave uh, when I can, uh, uh, Matt. Uh, Alex, Cade Cowell. Uh, certainly has to be uh, the top option off the bench attack-wise and, and potentially one of the most dangerous attacking players that this Quakes team has. And uh, he certainly showed it the last couple games. Absolutely, Charles. I thought he played really well against Portland on Wednesday. Not only does he have the pace and the physicality, but what stood out to me was his passing range and his vision. He played the ball into Carlos Fierro to start their goal-scoring attack in the second half. He also had a really, really nice through ball in behind the defense for Vaco. That was the one that was called back by the referee. 
Uh, and in the game before against the Galaxy, he also had a nice through ball in behind for Chris Wondolowski that was similar. So he has really, really strong service. Uh, that's something new that we're learning about him. And that's why I think that he is a winger. He belongs on the wing. Uh, and as much as he played uh, up top number nine in his youth career, I think his spot in this team is on the wing because of his passing vision uh, and, and his range. Uh, and I also think that a couple of the other young guys played really well. I, I thought Jacob Bacanyarich played well uh, against Portland on Wednesday. So I'm disappointed that he's out with injury tonight. And then JT Marcinkowski as well, I thought had a, had a strong performance in, in his first start of the season. A couple of other comments here from uh, our um, fans. Uh, Jonathan Edgardo, he says, I think this is Fierro's opportunity to show his worth. Matt Richardson says, give me a Rios Cowell striker partnership. And then goes on to say, thanks, Jamin, for hammering the service angle. Uh, Rios needs to move better and anticipate better, uh, but we need to be able to get the ball into good spots for him. That is spot on uh, from Matt Richardson um, as well. To everybody tuning in, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm just going to go down the row here for final thoughts before we kick off uh, this evening, starting with you quickly, Jamin. Yeah, the Quakes need three points. Let's not mince any words about it. If they don't get three words tonight, they're about to go on the road, and things are going to get worse, not better. This is the night. The Quakes have to figure out the attack. They need to put balls in the goal. They need to put at least three balls in because I believe with the firepower that Portland is bringing, they're going to put at least one or two in regardless of how good the Quakes play defensively. It's just a really potent attack. I agree, Jamin. I'm having to yell now because the music is blaring in a bias stadium. They are bringing the teams out. But I think tonight is a really important game for the Quakes. They're bottom of the Western Conference table, but they can lift themselves out of that position with a win. They are winless now in their last six. So I think to build on the progress that they've had in these last two games, they need the three points tonight, no doubt. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Will we see more momentum if it's time for the Quakes to move up the ladder? It is time tonight, and it is time in midweek against Colorado. So we'll see you for the post game for Jamin Moore and Alex Morgan, our producer Jason Scholl, our associate producer Aaron Scholl. Joel Soria will be with us for the post game show. I'm Charles Wolin. Enjoy the game. Yeah.